Hi, I'm V, and today we're going to be talking about the top five famous American cryptids caught walking among us. Buckle in, because there's a lot of crazy stuff in here. Number five, the Jersey Devil. Since the 19th century, New Jersey citizens have been putting up with a devilish cryptid whose name describes him to a T, the Jersey Devil. The Jersey Devil is described as a kangaroo-like creature with the head of a dog, face of a horse, bat-like wings, horns on its head, and a tail. The Jersey Devil has been terrorizing people for hundreds hundreds of years, and there have been a multitude of reported sightings which helped create the creature's reputation. While visiting a mill to inspect his cannonballs being forged, Stephen Decatur launched a cannon at a flying animal overhead. The animal hardly flinched and continued on flying. People often complained of the devil eating their livestock and leaving the animals in ghastly states. One man was actually able to demobilize the creature, thinking it dead, and took a picture. He showed it to dozens of people in the hope that someone would be able to identify the the creature with red eyes, and many claimed that it resembled the Jersey Devil. In January of 1909, there was a drastic influx in published sightings. Newspapers wrote of the devil attacking trolley cars and social clubs. The authorities supposedly fired at the creature in an attempt to stop the attacks, but to no avail. Reports of footprints in the snow were coming in from all over the state. Many even offered thousands of dollars for the capture of the Jersey Devil, with the plans to make a private enclosure, or zoo, for the cryptid. Skeptics believe that the Jersey Devil is nothing more than a folk story, saying that the devil was created by the early settlers who were collectively suffering from mass hysteria. Many people have been found faking their claims of sighting the Jersey Devil, and even faking tracks or photographs in an effort to substantiate their claims. Whether the Jersey Devil is real or not, it has definitely become extremely well-known and feared as a North American cryptid. Number four, the skunk ape. The skunk ape is described as a large biped petal creature, standing at five to seven feet tall and covered completely in reddish brown hair. The skunk ape has been reported to live in swamps of Florida. Sightings of the cryptid began in the early to mid 1900s, with the first major sighting occurring when a group of people noticed a large man-like creature in the perky bat tower. The creature shook the tower, driving the bats away, and it escaped into the woods itself shortly after. In the 70s, two Florida deputies reported firing at the creature after it had stalked them through the woods. The deputies followed the uncanny tracks, finding reddish brown hair that had been snagged in barbed wire. Many Everglades tour guides have reported sightings. In the summer of 1997, David Sheely noticed an animal trap filled with lima beans. David Sheely noticed an animal trap filled with lima beans had large prints on the ground surrounding it. David Sheely soon set up other traps filled with the beans, and many people who explored the sp swamps reported similar sightings to his. In 2000, the county sheriff's office received a photo of a large, hairy, man-like creature. The person who had sent the photo claimed to be an elderly woman who had seen the creature stealing apples off her porch. She scared it off with her camera, fearing that the creature was an escaped orangutan that might harm her or her family. Sightings are still reported today. 48 out of 67 counties in Florida have made a report since 2010. Those in search for a rational explanation of the creature have accused the entire mystery surrounding the creature as a hoax, saying that the skunk ape is nothing more than a myth and a knockoff Bigfoot. Some say that sightings were just people mistaking other wild animals for it, like sick bears or wolves. Bigfoot's small, swampy cousin has definitely stirred up some serious drama in the South. Number three, the Wendigo. The Wendigo is a humanoid creature or spirit originating from First Nations and indigenous people from the southeastern forests of Canada and the Great Plains of the US. The Wendigo is said to be a malevolent spirit, appearing at times as a creature with human-ish characteristics capable of possessing humans. The possession invokes feelings of insatiable hunger, greed, and even the desire to consume human flesh. The Wendigo has several descriptions. Depending on the region, it may differ slightly. The Wendigo Wendigo has been said to have a heart of ice, a foul stench, and a sudden chill when the creature's presence is near. However, in the original indigenous depictions of the creature, these features were not mentioned. The Wendigo was introduced by Algonquin-speaking indigenous people, including the Ojibwe, the Salto, the Cree, the Nespaki, and the Innu. In all of their descriptions, the Wendigo is consistently described as a malevolent, flesh-eating, supernatural being, strongly associated with winter, coldness, famine, starvation, and the North. Basil 
H. Johnson, an Ojibwe scholar, provided a description of the Wendigo. The Wendigo was gaunt to the point of emaciation. Its desiccated skin pulled tightly over its bones, with its bones pushing out against its skin. Its complexion the ash gray of death, and its eyes pushed back deep into their sockets. The Wendigo looked like a gaunt skeleton, recently disinterred from the grave. What lips it had were tattered and unclean and suffering from separation of the flesh. The Wendigo gave off a strange and eerie odor of decay and decomposition, of death and corruption. The Wendigo has also been reported to cause psychosis in humans, usually resulting in the ending of their lives. When near to starvation, the Wendigo will possess a human, which leads the human to act in strange and scary ways. The human will slowly stop seeing those around them as peers, and instead, the possessed may view their peers as food. The lives of people who have been possessed are often ended to ensure that no one gets eaten. The Wendigo has also been viewed as a concept opposed to a physical being, displaying the innate nature of greed, selfishness, and consumption that lays inside us all. In pop culture, the Wendigo has been depicted in many different ways, but all depictions were derived from Indigenous and First Nations people, which has in turn shone a lot of false and over-dramatized information over the Wendigo's origin. Number Number two, the Yeti. Yeti, abominable snowman, snowy Bigfoot, all names for the ape-like snow-dwelling creature that lives in the northern reaches of North America. The Yeti is described as a large bipedal creature with white, gray, or brown hair. It has also been depicted as having large, sharp teeth. The name abominable snowman was created in 1921 when Charles Howard Berry led a Mount Everest expedition. He wrote of seeing footprints in the snow. Describing them, he said, he believed they were probably caused by a large loping gray wolf, which in the soft snow formed double tracks rather like those of a barefooted man. His Sherpa guides gave the creature the name of Meto Kongmi, which roughly translates to man, bear, snowman. The name Abominable came out of a mistake that interviewer Henry Newman made. In preparation for an interview with Charles Howard Berry, Newman assumed that the word Meto, man, bear, meant filthy, which he substituted Abominable for. The name caught on quickly, and many called the creation of it a happy accident. Mentions and sightings of the Yeti extend back to before the 19th century. According to H. Seeger, the Yeti was part of many pre-Buddhist beliefs of Himalayan people. Sigur was told that Himalayan people used to view a glacier being as the god of the hunt. The Yeti has become an extremely popular creature. Filled with many mistakes and misunderstandings, the Yeti has a rich and slightly amusing history. Many movies have been made about Yetis, and people still travel to the northern reaches of the world in an attempt to capture proof of the Yeti's existence. Number one, the Loveland Frog. And finally, I saved the absolute best for last, the Loveland Frogman. The Loveland Frog, or Loveland Frogman, finds its origin in Ohio. Standing on two feet at four feet tall, the frog is definitely much larger than the average amphibian. The Loveland Frog was first spotted in 1955. Some stories specifying that it was first spotted in May of 1955, when a businessman spotted the creature while driving on a dark road in Loveland, Ohio. Other stories say that a group of men spotted two or three creatures, each standing on two legs, three to four feet tall, with frog-like faces and leathery skin. Honestly, that description just sounds like me and my friends waking up after a night out. The creatures were spotted over a poorly lit bridge, and one was extending its arm upwards and holding a sparkling light above its head. In March of 1972, in the dark of night, Officer Ray Shockey was shocked as he noticed a large animal scurrying in front of his car. Lit by the headlights, Shockey was able to note the large size of the animal. The creature then walked to the side of the road, stood up on its back legs, and climbed over the guardrail down towards the river. Two weeks later, another officer, Mark Matthews, reported seeing a large crouching animal on the same road. Matthews secured the animal and brought it to Shockey, showing his coworker that the creature was merely an iguana. The Loveland Frogman has become a less known, but very loved cryptid. Renderings of the creature definitely spark a little bit of joy into the viewer of them. Thank you for joining. What's your favorite cryptid? Let me know in the comments. Mine is definitely the Loveland Frogman, if you couldn't have guessed.